This 22nd of March, on the occasion of World Water Day, Research Matters caught up with Professor M. S. Mohan Kumar, a professor at the Department of Civil Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru. He is also the chairman of the Indo-French Cell for Water Resources and an associate faculty at the Interdisciplinary Centre for Water Research at Indian Institute of Science and an ex-secretary of the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology. Apart from his role at the institute, Professor Kumar has also extensively worked with government bodies such as Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board, Karnataka Urban Water Supply and Drainage Board and Bangalore Development Authority. The entire Research Matters team wishes you a very happy World Water Day. To begin with our conversation, like the saying goes, charity begins at home. Could you please tell us what households in the city could do to conserve water? Thank you for the greetings and I also wish you the same. We should all uh, celebrate World Water Day very well in the sense of a, as you rightly started the dialogue with proper conservation measures, I presume. You know. well, having said that, yes, I think uh, each one of us have our own uh, roles to play in terms of conservation and it depends on the way the either family or every organization or the, the city at large responds. So the conservation can start with simply the lesser usage of precious water and equally important is right quality water for right purpose usage in the sense that if we can afford to use some lesser grade water, quality water for other purposes and we definitely should not be using the very high quality water for that purpose that itself becomes uh, some sort of a conservation. One way to conserve water would be to harvest it. Could you please tell us what measures one could take at a household level to harvest water and why do measures like rainwater harvesting face many blockades and are often difficult to implement? I think that's a very good question to ask. In fact, if you look back a few years, in fact, I also I should mention here that uh, I was heading the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology until recently, about six years. And uh, there, uh, one of our colleagues, he took a lot of interest, Mr. Shivkumar, in uh, bringing this up for a very long time. And based on that work, this was made as some sort of a mandatory thing for rainwater harvesting. Having said that, yes, uh, a very large program was taken up in training uh, people, plumbers and other things. And anything when we want to make it mandatory, we should, be, we should have been fully geared up. Is the system ready to change over from tomorrow? You know, if that is not there, it will only become a policy. Having said that, I think a lot of attempts were made in terms of making it uh, more a popular uh, activity and trying to save. Yes, quite a few properties have done on Bangalore, and whoever has done, they are quite happy about it. And there are quite a few who have not done. In fact, the reasons for uh, why they have not done, probably they should be answering. It's very difficult to think about them and then you know say why they have not done or what is their problem is it simply the technology not available which is not true is it simply they could not find the right plumber to do their job i doubt doubt it is is it just i do not know i shouldn't use that word carelessness it's a Chalta attitude uh, is the one but having said that at every household level at even apartment level especially which are people are extremely conscious now if they start making it, I think we can see a lot of difference. Rainwater harvesting is said to be cost intensive, which often dissuades people from implementing harvesting methods and instead forces them to buy water. Could incentivizing such practices persuade more people to invest in rainwater harvesting? Thank you for the question. In fact, uh, this came up when uh, this policy was taken up by Bureau Business Week, in which I was also a part directly or indirectly. It is, you know, thinking that always the subsidy will win the thing, may not be correct. So, having said that, <clears throat> definitely there must be some motivation to do. You know, one must be able to push them and make it happen. And uh, all the time comparing costs vis-a-vis -vis what would have happened and then what don't happen with only money may not be the right uh, measure or the right uh, thing to do. If we as it is, in fact, many of us are spending a uh, lot of our resources directly or indirectly. Even if I don't build a big tank, in some other way we'll be spending the money. It could be getting the tankers, 
spending lot of uh, energy in some other way all that is happening but if you can harvest it and contribute indirectly by you know you are not depending on drawing more water from the grid and then you are uh, maintaining yourself will i feel environmentally to be a very positive contribution do you think government policies are required for people to adopt better water management practices or do you think people would themselves realize that water is a scarce resource and needs to be better managed so it's a both in the sense you know when there is some sort of a directive or a policy or something like that at least people there are many many very many most of the people are law abiding and the guidelines they feel when the directive comes they feel that which they should fall in line you know that's the type of the things till then they think it's not their job because nothing has come out i mean said that uh, there are a lot of communities communal housing colonies apartment where they have taken it on themselves to do these things just to showcase that they are you know able to harvest use that water in a better way and they will have a better quality of life and sometimes it has also come due to their necessity in the sense if for whatever reason either they are not on the grid or their supply is limited or you know they are not foreseeing that you know their supply will be much better than what it is they are get going into the other activities which some of them what we are talking which has really benefited them now all the more they will be some sort of a, a whatever you call ambassadors or the people who can say that you do these things it will be really help in your various roles in academia and government bodies including that at bwssp what are some of the aspects that you have learned for implementing better water management practices for a large city like bengaluru oh whatever i talk though i have a lot of roles to play in bwssp whatever i express my views are my own views as a faculty or a man working in the water area so it should not be in no way connected to bwssp but having said that i think the bwssp is trying to do its best in, in terms of you know bringing in uh, more water what is required and plugging in leakages where it is required and at the same time also trying to bring down the recycling and reuse of water one uh, standing example is the kaban park uh, uh, recycling plant when you see, if you see this is way ahead of its time you know it was uh, thanks to bda which was built it and now bda is is running that so most of the kaban park is run by the recycled water so that means you know one way you are putting water back into the uh, system so these are all some of the positive things which are done having said that still they think they need to really catch up with a lot of technology because technology is moving very fast the new way of handling water water problems are there so we must be able to catch up and at the same time even people who are dealing with that day in and day out must be equipped with that technology then only they will be able to address simple thing sitting here you know one must be able to get on a mobile what is happening to the bangalore water system at least at a big scale if not at a small scale if you start seeing it and if you start putting those things on the dashboard you will understand what is happening do you think from an academic perspective there is enough research happening in the area of water technologies like internet of things could revolutionize water management practices but yet seem to be underutilized so far What do you think is necessary from a science and technology perspective for better water management? In fact, the what is happening is many of these things, like especially the example what you the IoT, you know, it's, it's the one which is really getting to understand what's happening to the water system. And having you know, when we bring such things, it's not not only only water managers or civil engineers or for that matter geologists, it's their not only their job of water supply. We try to look at it should become the job of an information engineer, a communication engineer, a control engineer. It could be a obviously a chemist, microbiologist. You know the list is long. So when these people try to bring their uh, ideas, when these people join newly, obviously they'll be out of the box ideas. So then stitching these things in an IoT platform, trying to address issues, will make a lot of difference. First of all, what is happening right now is. all of us not are not informed fully that itself is a real uh, bottleneck if each one of us are informed is about our water system what is happening this much water we are getting this much we are losing this much we are able to you know use it well at different levels it's not only bws we are talking about it could as well apply to say other organizations it could be uh, big campuses like bangalore university or it could be iisc or it could be 
doesn't matter in course is campus so when each one of us are informed at every level then probably will be able to take uh, you know contribute in our own way not necessarily probably one should also be showing that what we lose is this much money we are losing which uh, probably be sure i don't think any of us will be ready to throw our money across and then you know walk away isn't it a lot of things are going on they, as you rightly put it's not enough lot more people have to join lot more new area people have to join that's where i meant it's not just the job of only one or two disciplines it is a multidisciplinary one and when we people talk about a big data what is that you know when we try to bring in all this data information and then try to understand what is happening to the whole system that will be a fantastic one one can you know take some uh, probably uh, proper decisions when you know. finally on the occasion of world water day what message would you like to give to the citizens of bengaluru we should conserve water and as much as possible you know like people are talking about smart cities i feel it should be more like sustainable cities so we need to really sustain with the available resources if only really require try to bring resources from outside and equally important at every level can we save and can we use our resources judiciously how do we bring in uh, the better efficiency or how do we increase our efficiency in the water system so if only we do that i think it will be much better and of course the this time it so happens the world water day theme is waste water so it is not really the waste water we need to really bring back the waste water to circulation either through recycled water or through nowadays people are talking about what's called used water used water we should bring it back into circulation thank you